Well, this thing is falling apart. And so I plan on fixing it. Let's see if we can do that. First thing I need to do is get out all of this stuff that has just deteriorated. Here's the last time my crucible reached. It, uh, Put hot aluminum down here. Let's see if I can get this off. Ooh. That bonded pretty well. All right, I can take some persuasion. I just need to knock off all the aluminum that got stuck on the outside. Well, boys and girls, I'm going to call an audible on this one. I was going to tear all that stuff out, but um, it's in there pretty good. So what I'm going to do is take that Satanite and just seal it with that. A couple of coats of that, and even in the top. And this top lip that has, oh, a good two inches around the top that's away. I'll put some kale wool in that and Satanite. And we'll see uh, how well this baby does. Now something that everybody says that uses this stuff is that it's very bad for your lungs. So I am wearing a respirator and make sure you do that with any type of particles or stuff that can get in your lungs. You just want to protect yourself. Now some people say make this like sour cream and I did make mine very close to the sour cream consistency. And here I go to put it on and I realize that I just need to get some of the stuff, uh, the loose stuff from crumbling. And I just go ahead and paint it all over. That's what that one looks like. But the, the lid is so crumbly, the stuff is crumbling. So I'll have to crumble a lot of that stuff out of there. And then try to redo the lid. Now I have enough kale wool to do the entire furnace, but since the stuff down below, which is the uh, sand and plaster of Paris is sticking so well, I decided just to use that little ring of uh, the kale wool and put Satanite on that to hold it down. Here she is with two coats of that Satanite on there. And I did the lid as well. See what happens. I put some um, kale wool up at the top. I plan on doing the whole thing in kale wool and probably will end up someday doing that. But right now, just to get me going, got to just fill it up with that Satanite. Now the aluminum that was on the outside of my kiln was from a breach in the last crucible. So here's a new one that I'm welding up. So you professional welders think you got something on me? Yes, I know it's ugly, but it does hold, guys. Now I'm taking a, an exhaust reducer from an automobile and a welding it on here to guide in the, uh, the torch for the kiln. Now the pail that I'm using is very thin metal, so I had to do a lot of little tacks. And here's test fire number one. And this is after the Satanite is cured for weeks and weeks. And this initial test fire, I'm just taking and burning out aluminum from the old crucible. And here she is fired up for the first time since I put in the Satanite and then the uh, kale wool. So here's the real test after the initial test there. Now it's time to test out the new crucible and the furnace fix. Now before I start melting cans, aluminum cans, I like to get a puddle of molten aluminum down in the crucible. 
Yeah, it looks like she's ready to go. I have like four to five bags of cans. So this is gonna take a while. This is the remnant of a lobster net. Um, I used to live in Florida and we'd go lobstering and there's part of the net or the, the aluminum part of it getting melted up. Now it's just lather, rinse, repeat. And always preheat your molds, guys, or you could get some splattering aluminum. Now this new crucible is shorter than the other one and I miss with a lot of cans and you can see them melted along the bottom. And now it's time to take off the dross and anyone who has melted pop cans before knows there is a lot of dross. And there's something so cool to me about watching molten metal pour out and uh, I just love this. And now, right back at it. Well, this is what we uh, ended up with with all those cans. We uh, these are different sizes, but they're right around. Uh, let's see, there's seven seven of these blocks there, and this is the dross that was uh, left out of there. However, guys, I do believe there's aluminum in there that can be um, extracted. I'm going to try something on the next uh, episode, see if I can get the rest of the alumina, uh, aluminum out of that and um, go from there. I'll show you my casualties now. Well, my lid is taking a couple hits. Um, I'm going to redo this lid. Uh, the Satanite has come off around there. And so I'm going to redo the lid probably with the... Um, with the kale wool and also because of the uh, because of the new height of my crucible I was throwing oh had to be two dozen cans down in here I'll show you what uh, what's left of them so that's about like I said that's a that's a, about a couple of dozen cans that went into there also, I hit the edge of this and knocked some of this up, so I'll have to re-satanite that. Alright, so all those cans that fell down into the crucible, a lot of the junk got on here. So I'll just have to clean that up and the aluminum cans 
Hey guys, there are guys that say it's not worth melting them. I wouldn't melt aluminum cans to pour into a foundry immediately, but if you're just trying to get stock like this um, and you got time, it creates a lot of waste. Uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to try to get some of the aluminum out of that waste, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, paint and varnish on the inside of those that come out and turn into ash and, and garbage. Uh, but it does give you good aluminum. So, uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.